Welcome to Rick's Hobby Hut, guys, and in this episode, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing power weapons. So let's head on over to the table and get to work. Anvil of War! Rick's Hobby Hut! Welcome back to the studio, guys. Uh, I got a lot of questions last month when I posted my veteran Marines on how to do, <clears throat> excuse me, on how to do uh, these power blades. So I figured it'd be a great opportunity for me to show you two ways of doing it. Uh, the second half of the video is going to show you specifically how I created uh, this color and achieved this effect. Whereas this first half of the video is going to be pertaining to uh, using glazes and a, a really easy way to blend your colors together to, to create the same effect. As you can see, I've used green across multiple parts of this model. All the same recipe, so it's not gonna it's not different uh, per each side. So whatever we're gonna the way I'm gonna show you here, you can apply it to anything and it'll work the same way. So. The colors for this that you're going to have to use, oops, excuse me, I just got to put that on its stand. The colors that you're going to need are Caliban Green, Warpstone Glow, Moot Green, and I put it way over here, your favorite white. I'm using game color because uh, it's you know, the white I have. Don't use an off-white, use an actual white. Uh, because you're gonna you're gonna mute the color if you use an off white. I've already gone ahead and laid it out, and the piece I'm gonna be showing you on, this is purely for demonstration purposes. I'm not gonna be using this piece, but I'm gonna show you how uh, how to achieve the power sword effect on this. So I've already gone ahead, laid out all four of my colors. You can't see the white because it's uh, a little blown out right here in the background, but rest assured, it is there. Now I've started with a black base because we're going to be working the color up from dark to light. And I'm just breaking the paint down and making it very translucent. This is my glaze. Just like so. And we're going to concentrate uh, the main color right here. We're going to split here and on this side as well but we're going to be creating the first color right here because this is where the sun's coming down if you imagine he's holding the sword to his side like that uh, this is where the, the light is going to be uh, cast first on it and then we're going to create the shadow on the back side and again we're working up from a black and we're going to go about halfway down and just start dragging the color you want to drag the color uh, on all these paints all these glazes that we're going to do today to the tip because that's where you want the color concentrated. I've actually got a little bit too much on there so I'm going to take a little bit off. Just like so. Starting halfway and working our way up. Again we're dragging the color down to where we want it concentrated. And then here to the tip. And then down here. Like so. It's going to look very rough on this first couple of passes because we're just building the base colors right now. And then we'll go into uh, saturating it more with the, the lighter colors. Like so. Dragging down here. Dragging up to the tip here. Dragging down here. And dragging up to the tip there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep working this back and forth till I get the the gradient. Next up, we're going to use the warp zone glow, and we're going to use the same technique. Break it down. We're going to use this as a glaze again. You want it fairly transparent, or translucent, I should say. Just like so. And then we're going to go back in on the color we just said, and we're going to start it just a little bit up, and we're just going to blend it in, like so. First layer, 
second one. Go to the other side. Drag it up to the tip to concentrate the color. Drag it to the base. Like so. As you can see, I've been working it back and forth for about uh, five minutes now. And we're, I, I'm happy with the way it's starting to look and I'm starting to get the two different uh, cross, ha cross sections, the highlight and the shadow. Highlights here, shadows here, and on this side we have the highlight here and the shadow here. You can see we're starting to see the split and it's starting to come together and look like a blade now. One of those classic power blades that you keep, or power swords that everybody loves to see. And we're just going to continue the process with the next color. Uh, now we're going to start working the moot green in again, working as a glaze, fairly thin, like so. What we're going to do, like we did with the last one, we did. We're going to start just a little ways up from where where the the blend is of the two colors. Actually, I got a little bit much on there, and we're just going to draw it up to the point again like so now this color as you can see is going to be a little, much more intense than the last colors that we put on so this is why you have to work with thin make it thin coats oops got a little bit on that side like so Let each layer dry drag it to the point drag it to the bottom I'm actually starting to get a little bit of a hard edge there, so I'm just going to blend that in, try and make that disappear. Come over to this side, same thing again. Drag all the color to the point. Drag it to the base. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a, th a layer consistency of the, of the moot green and I'm going to start by creating, I start, start doing a little bit of edge highlighting here. And we're going to just drag along, we're just going to outline the blade and it's going to fill it in really nice, it's a little bit. And I'm using the edge of my brush for this because there's enough um, enough of a ridge that you're not gonna you don't have to worry about going over on something and ruining what you're doing. With this one, edge highlight, all the way around. I always like to do the edge highlight before I do the final layer of uh, color because I find it, it'll blend in and it, it makes it look like it becomes part of it. Like you can do it after, but it looks a lot, the edge looks a lot harder if you do it after you do the final color. So that's why I tend to, to do it before. It blends out really nice and makes it look really smooth. And it's me personally, You, it doesn't matter if you want to go ahead and do the, the, the edge highlight after you do the final uh, color, go right ahead. But me personally, this is the way I do it, and, and it's the effect I like. So I'm going to add some to this white, this white to the moot green, and I'm going to lighten it up. And then break it down to a glaze consistency. You kind of want a one-to-one -one ratio of the color because we're going up in increments of the shade. <clears throat> There's too much paint on there. And I 
again, we're just concentrating right at the tip with this more. And it's not quite a glaze consistency yet. Still a little too thick. And this one we're not going to go a lot of layers because we just want a light, a very fine highlight color. Like so, and then we're going to add the edge highlight on, the, on this side only. We're not going to, we're not going to go on this dark side with the highlight. And then down here. too heavy there. Just wipe it away. Like so. Come back to this side. And do this part of the highlight. have it. So now that, that it's dry, we have all the glazes done, uh, we're going to go in and we're just going to bring all the color back together and give it a little bit more vibrance because when we added the final highlight it lost a little bit of its saturation. So we want to bring that back and all I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the Bialtan Green Shade. And it's just going to bring the blends together a lot, make it look a lot smoother and bring a little bit of saturation back into, uh, in, in, into the part, into the color itself. And we don't want to use a lot. We're just going to basically glaze with this to saturate it. We're not trying to create any, uh, any shadows. We're just adding saturation back into it like so. This side, going down, this side, we're going up and bringing the saturation back into it. Oops. Just like so. And there you go. As you can see, all the colors, uh, all the blends have been smoothed out. The saturation is back. We have the green that we wanted, the nice uh, deep green. And like I, like I said at the beginning, uh, it was a very simple process, really easy to do. Um, don't worry about trying to do uh, those little glints, those little scratches in the sword right off the bat. If you're new to, to glazing and you're new to painting in general, uh, start with the basics and work from there. We did a very simple, uh, we used four colors, a uh, simple two-tone uh, two, two split. We didn't go with like three on this side and the two on this side that you see in other ones and, and make it all complex and crazy. We, create, we did a very simple color, uh, a very simple technique to finish this. <laughs> So I've got my piece in front of me right here that I'm going to be uh, showing you how to do my emerald blades on. I've already gone ahead and done my metallic uh, and wash. So I've used uh, chainmail silver as the base color. And then I've just gone ahead and washed it with null oil. Uh, now the next two, two layers that we're going to put on this before we put the final color on it is just going to be two layers of dry brush. It's as simple as that. 
so I'm going to be using Necron Compound for my first dry brush just to bring the highlights back uh, into the metallics. And I've just got a medium dry brush here and I'm just going to wipe it out and just do the go over it lightly. I don't have to be crazy neat with this because it after all it is just a dry brush just add a little bit shine back to the metal and now the next layer we're going to do is dead white and again, we're just going to do a dry brush on this, and I'm actually just going to put it right on my on my uh, paper towel because I don't need to break out the palette or anything for this right now. So I'm just going to get some of the white. On this time, I'm using a smaller dry brush, a small dry brush to be specific from Citadel, and I'm just going to wipe out as much of the white as I can. Test how it's coming across on my hand, and I like that. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to basically just add the color to the tip or add the, the white to the top of the blade because uh, this is going to show through in the next step we're going to take with this. So I'm dragging down because I want the concentration at the top like so. You can see it's doing the highlight Oop. and at the very top I'm gonna, you can actually go a little heavier because that's what I usually do because I really want it to come through when we do do the next layer like so and I'm just gonna do a little bit drag it a little bit across just to get some more definition down there but that's it not gonna go heavy now onto the other side. I'm gonna go back, load my brush up again, and wipe it out. Again, I'm testing it on my hand. And this side, we're gonna do this now. So there you go. You have the final product after dry brushing. Now the next step we're going to do is we're actually going to go over to the airbrush station and we're going to use an ink. We're going to use Vallejo Game Ink Green specifically to create that emerald look. Alright, so I've gone ahead and I've masked off the bits of the model that I don't want any overspray on. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the ink, working in light layers, uh, because the nature of ink, it's very fluid, it's more like a wash, and if you're not careful, it will spider web and it'll pool uh, out of control really easily if you, if you let too much air through the airbrush onto it. So I'm just going to work nice even coats, and I'm going to let it dry in between, and I'm going to actually use just the air uh, portion of my brush to help dry it off in between layers. Uh, the bonus of using an ink, and what I love about inks, is that easy dry brush work we did previous to this step is going to come through right here. As you can see, you're getting the highlights, you're getting the concentration of color, uh, but we're not losing the metallic effect. And once I'm done with this, that's it. I'm not going to do anything else to the blade except for some finishing touches.
that does it for this video guys i hope you picked up a few tips and tricks along the way uh, to help you in your painting career until next time please like share and subscribe and if you want to see more content like this and anything specific leave a comment down below and i'll see what i can do until next time keep your paint on the palette